Well, shalom and welcome back to Talking Torah. I'm Rabbi Ravid Tillis and today is a very special day on Talking Torah, a first for Talking Torah. Normally, it had just been either myself and Rabbi Klein or myself and one other person, but today we have a very special treat. We have two people joining me uh, on Talking Torah, the Treemans, Marsha and Stanley, who are here to talk about their experience in with working at the inn. Um, and I want to give them an opportunity to talk about the inn, and then uh, the three of us will also talk a little bit of Torah as well. So, All um, right, go ahead. Well, we have been working with the Interfaith Nutrition Network for over 20 years. A um, number of years ago, um, Rabbi Klein called a meeting uh, of congregants. Someone from the Internet Interfaith Nutrition Network contacted him and wanted to know if we would be able to participate. And he chose, Rabbi Klein chose Stan and I to be in charge at that time. And uh, we had quite a, well, at least eight to ten congregants that came every week to do the job. Uh, we found out that the inn was established in 1983. Uh, two people a woman with six children, and I wondered how she ever had the time, and a uh, priest uh, started the, um, in this area to put together the inn. And uh, they had um, started in Hempstead, and they now have 14 locations and serve about 5,000 meals a day. Wow. It's, yes. Now, our part of that was to do that once a month, deliver the food to them. Uh, they would then bake it because uh, we could not cook it here, but we prepared six large trays, each one uh, sufficiently large to serve probably 20 people, and we started producing that about 20 years ago, and uh, we've been going ever since, and uh, from our standpoint at least, uh, uh, we think it's been a very successful and uh, long-running endeavor. We started with the spinach lasagna, but somebody at the inn felt that more people would go for cheese than spinach. Yeah, so I, I don't disagree. So I we have been doing that all well these years. Very yes. insightful. Yeah. You know, Stanley, you used the word success, uh, and first of all, I want to thank you uh, for 20 years of service uh, to the inn and really to our community. You make us stronger by with the work that you do for the inn. Um, for 20 years. That's really an, a tremendous accomplishment. Thank so thank you so much and thank you to everybody who's ever worked at the inn, the regulars, the uh, every now and thens, you know, who, who come by. Anybody who is able to uh, help with the inn deserve a lot of credit uh, and, and we want to really thank all of them. But particularly, uh, we want to thank the Treemans because without you guys, who knows uh, if that would have ever taken off in the way it did. So, but speaking about success, I want to talk about this week's Torah portion, which, um, you know, this week's portion is Bechukotai, and it's a little bit troublesome, I'll tell you, because it's all about the blessings and the curses. And if you do, if you follow God's mitzvot, you get blessings, and if you don't follow God's mitzvot, you get curses. And that I can, that's troublesome in itself. But when I was reading it uh, recently, I realized that I'm actually troubled a little bit by one of the blessings, okay? One of the blessings said that if we are, if we do well, then we'll be successful. And what does successful mean? That we will have big armies that will be able to run out all the other armies and uh, live in peace because we will have killed off all of our enemies. How's that for success? Well, I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't sound very successful, right? No. That, that sounds no. troublesome, yeah. right? So... How can, so the Torah is presenting this idea that success comes at the expense of others. And we can think about that in business, and we can think about that in, in many other elements of our lives. That in order that there could be the thought that uh, in order for us to be successful, it has to come at the expense of others. Is that true? I think so. You, yeah. You think it's true that... that I think that it comes to the sometimes comes at the expense of others. Sometimes it yes, does come at the I expense of others. Yes. Okay. Well, I kind of disagree with that because right. I think that uh, uh, not everybody can totally become successful on their own. So that right. if some people with certain 
capabilities that maybe not everybody has are successful, they will produce, for example, jobs, opportunities for those that maybe could not become so successful by themselves, but because other people have such good foresight and uh, can set up certain programs or set up businesses, they can hire a lot of people to do very good jobs and therefore society gains um, on, their, on their whole uh, issue rather than just uh, everybody having to be um, non-successful. Right. But sometimes they could take advantage of people. In right, their, yeah. In their success, they could take advantage of people that do not have their opportunity. Yeah, it's certainly you have to be careful when you're successful that, you know, it's important to look back on success and say, how did I get here? You know, Stanley's saying you want to be thankful and appreciative of all the people right. that helped you along the way. And Marsha, what you're adding also is when you look back at, back at success, you say, did I do it the right way? Did I do it in a moral, moral and ethical way? And I think also that really relates to your work at the end. You guys were very successful. And you deserve a, a lot of the credit, but it's not only. But now, looking back 20 years later, the success was not only because of you, and it certainly didn't come at the expense of other people. You know, I think about a um, uh, a Kabbalistic teaching, which is that Torah is like fire, is what they said. Why is Torah like fire? Because you can have with a fire. Think about a candle. When you take one candle and you um, try to light another candle. That does nothing to your flame. Your flame isn't lessened by the fact that you transfer it to another, to another candle, right? And it should always be the same thing with mitzvot, that we feel like we are not lessened. In fact, we are expanded and, we, and our influence expands out when we do mitzvot. That it's never, that we don't have to get success at somebody else's expense. So really, again, on behalf of the entire Merrick Jewish Center community, thank you guys so much for well, everything that you do. Thanks goes to Shelley Rosenblum, and it goes to the, I could call it our staff of volunteers, because they've been very dedicated. Yes. And uh, they've stuck by us all these years. Just one more thing. I think the staff of the uh, Merrick Jewish Center helps us set up the uh, tables and the trays and everything else once a month so that we can produce this food. Uh, they should get kudos for uh, their Good. help over yeah. the past 20 years also. Absolutely. And uh, Marsha had mentioned Shelley Rosenblum. If you would like to help with the inn, you know, we, we're always looking for people to help um, bring, uh, bring more food to people in our community who need it. That would be, that brings success to all of us here at the Merrick Jewish Center. And so if you're able to, if you're interested in volunteering at the inn, please contact Shelley Rosenblum. I'll, I'll put her email address at the bottom uh, of, this, uh, of this video. And also, of course, you can always reach out through the main office and they'll, and they'll be able to set you up. So thank you to, uh, to Marsha and Stanley, a very successful first time, uh, three people talking Torah. So thank you guys so much, and Shabbat Shalom and Lehit Road. Thank you for allowing us to have this uh, debut here. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs>